we uh, well, we we uh, didn't really figure. I don't know if we figured on playing out or not. But anyway, we started playing uh, a couple of little jobs here and there, and uh, mostly uh, for free. Or what most of it was because we just starting out. But it's worth a million dollars worth of uh, experience, you know, just to get out and sing in front of people. You gain valuable performance skills from that, I'm sure. Yeah, you, you have to be able to do it out, you know, no matter how good you are at home, you got to be good out. So uh, that's that's how we started, and from there we just kind of went on, you know. So who would you say were some of your early musical influences? Well, definitely the, the great Roy Acuff, and of course Ernie Tubb, and Tex Ritter, and Red Foley, Eddie Arnold, none better than Eddie Arnold. I, that guy was, I got a lot of, still got a lot of his old original records and, and uh, Roy Wiggins on steel. They were great. They were really great. And so how long after you started listening to country records did you begin to tune into the Grand Ole Opry uh, radio show out of Nashville? Well, I... I don't know exactly how, maybe uh, maybe before it gets to get out, even I just uh, happened to stumble onto a Ray Cuff had a half hour uh, network program in, uh, on Saturday nights. Uh, Prince Albert, I'll never forget it, Prince Albert sponsored it. And the solemn old judge was the, uh, well, he was like the, uh, well, he was like the overseer, you know. He, Manager. Yeah, more or less, yeah. And that's how they started. So Roy brought him out in uh, uh, WSM. That's how he got the Aubrey going. And then, like I say, the one on, I think it was NBC. But, so that was great. But outside of that, the only really way we could pick up, like uh, on a cold, clear winter's night, you could actually pick up WSM Nashville pretty good in uh, Wheeling, West Virginia. WWVA. Yeah. And... Uh, once in a while, I could get Chicago, the old bond dance, WLS. But sure. uh, it had, the conditions had to be right, you know. Now, in 1954, mm. I think it was, that you actually started to host your own live radio show on uh, WESX, which was, for those who don't know, a North Shore well, area yeah, radio yeah, station. We, we had a little, we had a little uh, show there, a little uh, Saturday afternoons for a while. Well, not, it wasn't anything spectacular, but it was... Uh, like like they used to say, uh, you know, we weren't good, but we were loud. You know, <laughs> they used to say in the old days. <laughs> yeah. And so, as you said, that was a weekly radio show. And how long uh, was each show? Uh, I think it was a half hour. It's been so long ago. You know, that was 50, uh, way over 50 years ago. That was a long, <laughs> it's a long way back. And so now you actually started to enter and win some talent contests uh, in the area, and one in particular was a talent contest that was hosted by WMUR Television, which was an ABC affiliate, still is, uh, located out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Yeah, well, that was a, a program called uh, uh, Stars of Tomorrow, and... Uh, we more we won a thing and we made a few appearances. Uh, they they had just started out really. The uh, the studio was about uh, five by six. I'd say you could hardly get in there with your guitars, you know, because <laughs> they were just starting up in them days too. Sure. But uh, it, it was a, an experience, you know. Every every experience you should gain something by it, you know. And so, wasn't it around that same time that you started playing the honky tonk and nightclub circuit in the Boston and North Shore area? Well, yeah, I played the old honky tonks there, and quite a, for quite a while, uh, off and on, you know, with different different places. You never country music. The the owners didn't seem to want country music. You'd go around soliciting, you know, trying to get a job, and they they used to say, uh, well. You, you can't dance to country music. Hmm. Uh, of course, they found out later that, you know, uh, one of the better, the, the people love the country music dance to more than anything. The shuffles and the two steps and, yeah, and all the balance. Just, you know, yeah, they, that kind of music just was that kind of dancing, you know. And so uh, we just, that's, that's what we did. We went from 
We play, you play here a while, you play there a while. You play in some real lousy places, and, you play, and, you, and we played in some real nice places. Now, as we mentioned earlier a little bit about it, uh, you and your band made several recordings back in the day, and uh, we have heard some earlier in the show, and of course we'll hear some again after the interview, but I was wondering if you could please tell us what it was like to record uh, your first records. Well, mostly uh, the first ones were, were uh, just my brother Dave on steel and on guitar and me, and, and uh, just the two of us, but we uh, we put them out mostly for, uh, you know, for uh, uh, see if we could do anything from them, you know, and uh, uh, they used to play them on the radio for us down there in Salem, WSX. And uh, one day, uh, my brother and I had stopped in a diner down there, uh, for, and we came out, you know, and uh, he threw the uh, threw the ignition on, and it was right in the middle of one of my songs. And that was the weirdest feeling, you know, to be sitting in the car kind of hearing you, <laughs> yeah. your song come in or come through, you know. But uh, uh, they... they uh, they were they were good. They played them. They played them now and then for us. But we didn't, uh, you know. We 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 made them mostly demonstrations. And in fact, my brother took one. Uh, but here's the catch: he took the wrong one. He took one down <laughs> to New York to uh, uh, Columbia Records, and uh, they they gave you know I guess we, they rejected it anyway. They gave it a play, uh, whatever they did. But uh, the thing is, he took the wrong one. He didn't, he didn't take our last, the latest one. That was the best, you know. Yeah. And it's uh, about uh, half past the hour here on 90.5 FM WPEA, Country and Conversation. I'm Paul Joyce, your host, and I'm talking with New England country music legend and my grandfather, Paul Cloutman, here on the program. And so, now I know that you have a lot of great stories to tell from your days in the honky-tonks, and... Uh, I was wondering if you might be able to please tell us some of them. Well, a lot of funny stuff, really. Uh, I know that throughout your career, as you said, you played in a lot of yeah. really nice places and some that weren't so nice, were they? Oh, yeah. We 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 played everything from sawdust floors to nice carpet on the, on the floors, you know. Went one extreme to the other. But uh, one place I played the... Uh, the Oh, I guess he was the owner. I come over and he said, uh, told this guy, he said, now if there's any trouble, breaks out. Uh, I want you guys to put your, put your equipment down, you know, and get in and break it up, you know. <laughs> so uh, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. All right. I'll take care of my guitar and that's it, you know. <laughs> right, those things are expensive for Carmelo. <laughs> did you ever play behind chicken wire like singers no, did in no, the South? No, no, we probably should have. <laughs> some of those places, but we never did. Uh, I, I think uh, Hank Williams did, and some of the boys. That was big down south with them, good old boys. You know, they, they, uh, they, they like to. Throw, I don't. Want, they must have thrown the empty beer cans and stuff. And no, we never, <laughs> never played behind. Uh, when, when you said, when you mentioned the throwing the the beer cans, all I could think of was in the Blues Brothers movie. Uh, John Bellucci, they were playing at a place in the south, I think it was in Texas, and they had the chicken wire up, and they didn't like what they were playing, and they yeah. were throwing uh, bottles at them, and they were crashing wow. to the floor. And <clears throat> yeah. They would have got killed if the wire wasn't there, you know? Oh, yeah, they, they really <laughs> did. All those places, they, they had to have that. It's amazing. And you also met some pretty unique characters in your day, didn't you? Well, yeah, I met a lot of characters and. uh I played with a lot of characters, I guess. It was just as many. <laughs> seemed like uh, anybody, almost everybody that played was a character, you know. <laughs> just seemed to be the way it was. You had to be that way to, to be out there, I guess. You know. Uh, Remember anyone in particular? No, well, yeah, we had one little guy. He was, he was pretty good, too. He, he could really sing Hank, Hank Williams stuff. Uh... They used to call him. One of the guys used to call him uh, Nashville Kid, but he just—he's just a small guy. 